I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Senator Patrick Leahy chided Republicans for blocking additional COVID funding on the Senate floor Thursday. Leahy warned that without this funding, new variants of the virus will arise. The Vermont Democrat claimed that, quote, with COVID, if you are not staying ahead of it, you are slipping behind. Listen in as he explains. Mr. President, you know, as senators are preparing to return to their home states over the 4th of July, it is frustrating to me that we've once again kicked the can down the road on providing the needed funding to address the ongoing COVID pandemic. <clears throat> For months, the administration, scientists, healthcare experts have raised the alarm. We don't have the resources we need to stay ahead of that virus. And actually, with COVID, if you're not staying ahead of it, you're slipping behind to the detriment of all Americans. And to keep our recovery afloat, we've robbed Peter to pay Paul. Earlier this month, the administration announced it's repurposing $10 billion that we appropriated in Congress, $10 billion that was there to purchase additional vaccines, additional therapeutics because our stocks were running low. But the action by the administration, unfortunately, was necessary. Projections indicate that as many as 100 million Americans, 100 million Americans, nearly one in three will be infected or reinfected with COVID this fall and winter as our immunity to this disease wanes. The president requested COVID funding. President Biden requested that three months ago. The Republicans had blocked this funding. Without new funding appropriated by Congress, the administration was left with no choice but to repurpose that $10 billion. And even that, experts across the board agree it's wholly insufficient to prepare for the coming surge. But even this necessary choice has consequences. To pay for these vaccines and therapeutics, the administration had to take funding from research for the next generation of vaccines and to sustain our testing capacity. It was not, as some Republican members have indicated, excess cash that was simply there for the taking. This means that as the next surge crashes over the country, we'll not have the resources necessary to ensure that people can get tested. Have we already forgotten the mad scramble driving from pharmacy to pharmacy to get a rapid test so that we could safely spend the holidays with our friends and families just uh, six months ago. It means that new variants will emerge. We're not going to have the necessary resources to adequately continue the groundbreaking research we have supported for next generation vaccines. And fueled by our waning immunity and insufficient vaccination efforts abroad, new variants are going to emerge. And those are going to pose new threats to us here at home. The desperate measures taken by the administration, which they had to in the absence of congressional action, they knew do nothing to support a global vaccination effort that's running on fumes. The U.S. Agency for International Development that manages our global response to the COVID pandemic has already obligated more than 95% of the funds they have available. 95. Soon they'll have no choice but to start shutting down their vaccine delivery operations. That means more mutations, more variants, more infections, more deaths abroad and at home. Keep in mind what we're doing 
with AID as we're trying to stop this pandemic outside our, our uh, borders is because we realize that every single one of these variants is one airplane trip away from crossing our borders, even as we have to do things to stop it within our borders. Finally, I want to make clear that we don't have time to say, well, we can act later on. This is not a problem that can be solved by flipping a switch. In order to produce the tens of millions of doses of vaccines and therapeutics necessary to prepare for a fall surge, the government and biotech companies need to begin purchasing supplies now. They can't say, oh, we have an epidemic. Golly, go out and buy some supplies. Well, we have to make them first. Come back to us in a few months. That doesn't do anything for the people who are getting hit with COVID. And the longer we wait, the further we fall in line, as other countries will place their orders ahead of us. I tell my friends on the other side of the aisle who are blocking this money, we can't wait and see what happens. That's why we were wholly unprepared for the pandemic in the first place. You recall in the last administration, we'll wait and see what happens. We'd refuse to invest in preparing for the worst. Let's prepare for the worst. We can hope for the best, but hope is not a vaccine. Preparation can create vaccines. So I'm frustrated once again leaving town without addressing this looming crisis. Since March, I've called on us to act. As chairman of the Senate Appropriations Committee, I will continue to make these calls. I'll fight for these urgently needed resources. But we have to wake up to the fact we have to do it now. You don't do it after the epidemic hits. You don't do the research after you try to do the research before and hope you can stop the pandemic from happening. Mr. President, I yield the floor.